of them will be extra credit. You're, you're going to be there for two hours, I will say that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> you're going to be there. Right afterwards, we can come to office hours to work on the homework. Yeah. So there's that. <laughs> Just being back to be doing this stuff for yeah. four hours. Yep, yeah. I will be there. Uh -huh. Until Friday. Yeah. calculates the binding energy of some nucleus given its number of nucleons A and its charge or number of protons C. Um, so if we had this equation, um, one question, you, something you might see is calculate the binding energy of um, a certain nucleus. And what I want to go through is um, let's calculate them for two nuclei. I'm not actually going to write out the numbers. This is like algebra. Um, I'm just going to write down the answers. Is there supposed to be an AP on the final? Okay. So yeah. Maybe. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. 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 It depends on yep. how where you look it up. It'll just make delta one or two, one negative one or zero instead of yeah. But in our situation, we won't actually need it um, because we're going to look at odd nuclei or odd nuclei. And so we were asked to calculate their binding energies. And then from these binding energies, we want to make some interpretation about the nuclei. Um, so given these binding energies, what might you say, how might you compare the two? Right. So it's an important distinction to make that this is the binding energy for the entire nucleus. Um, you need to, to make a comparison, you need to divide by the number of nucleons so that you have um, a number per nucleon. So iron 56, if we haven't said it enough times, is the most stable uh, or has the highest binding energy per nucleon. Um, so you should always see that one and think that it's super stable. Um, so that's equivalent to those um, binding energies per nucleon. And so now using that figure, what might you say about, or how might you compare these two nucleons? Say iron 56 is more strongly bound nucleus. 
right. And because of that, you might, and it's a big might, you might um, say that you expect iron-56 to be more stable than uh, uranium-235. Yeah. You said it's a big might. Um, so in this particular situation it works, but um, it doesn't generally work. It's more the concept that <laughs> it works, but... Um, you mean that, that one is larger than another? How do you get it? So the beta Weissacker form, if you go into Wikipedia, yeah. Um, it shows a plot of it, and it's very wide, and so the, like, value of stability is right in there, so for most of the uh, nucleuses you encounter in real life, their beta Weissacker binding energy per nucleon is really close regardless of their stability, so in general you wouldn't want to use this um, as a definite this nucleus is more stable than another nucleus. Right. And I mean, right. there's some, like, the alpha particle has a uh, binding energy per nucleon of 4.7, but it's more stable, way more stable than uranium. So during lecture, we went over special relativity, but we never had anything like yeah. that. On I, I don't think you should have okay. special well, relativity. Just making sure. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. just cruising through yeah. the slides yeah. here, just freaking yeah. out. Yeah. So we'll have yeah. to do anything yeah. regarding relativity in our life conduct. I don't want to <laughs> promise you that <laughs> we get won't, but uh, Eric really I would be shocked. Good. Okay. So. Like, I don't want to. Yeah, I would I would be pretty surprised. And even if he did, he did say if we needed an equation for anything, he would give us. So yeah, you're right. He would give us. Yeah. He might do that, but I don't know. All right. <laughs> I wouldn't expect to calculate anything. I guess on that, like, if you were to accelerate a radioactive isotope in a cyclotron at near relativistic speeds, what would you expect to happen to its half-life? Guys, bring it in. Um, so if we put a radioactive isotope in a cyclotron and we fun at speeds close to uh, the speed of light, what would happen to its half-life? As observed, it would increase. Yeah. Right. So if you can answer that question, anything he throws in, that will probably take care of it. From our reference frame, it's longer, right? Right. Okay. Yeah. It seems to slow down. Yes. But it's the, in its reference frame, it's safe. Yeah. Cool. Um, so then, let's say we have a reaction um, like this, um, where we have so we have this reaction, and we kind of want to know um, how much energy is released uh, in this reaction, and we're going to use the beta Weissacker formula uh, to predict that energy release. How would you proceed with calculating E? Um, finding energies of the products minus finding energies of the reaction. Right. Or yeah, I guess it depends. So long, it depends on how you do it. You could do it either way and justify it. If it's a negative, you could say it's liberated, but if you did it the other way, you would say that it's an absolute value. So, um, and I guess if you're unsure, it's always good to err on the side of putting down an absolute value and saying this much energy is a relief. Um, so, we'd have the binding energy of boron um, plus the binding energy of a proton, which is not anything, right? Um, and then we subtract the value of times the helium 4 
And this evaluates to be 22.4 MeVs in the beta, beta Weissacker formula, which is actually pretty close to the real value. I mean, it's not great, but considering how not good the beta Weissacker formula is, it's a nice surprise. <laughs> So it's a proton, right? Yeah. Um, it's the binding energy describes the binding energy between nucleons, and so if you just have a proton, it does, it's not bound to any other nucleons, so there's no binding energy. Right, there's no binding energy. Um, and I guess maybe that's the subtlety that's important to distinguish. Is a pro the P is, is indicating strictly a proton, not a hydrogen, because if I had just put H there, then you might say, well, it could be a, a proton or it could be a deuteron. Um, and if it were a deuteron, then yeah, you'd have binding energy that you would need to account for. But then you wouldn't have conserved, like, nucleons, right? Would... Well, I, well, I'm just, yeah, then this side would be different. You'd have to have a proton over there. Right, yeah, it wouldn't be the same. But, uh, but we're just explaining why there's uh, no binding energy in the proton. Okay, that's pretty much all I have for you guys um, prepared. So if you have any, yeah. For like, for like the, the simple, the simplified product uh, reactant notation. How do you do that? Things that only have like two products and like like two reactants in one product. So usually A, A, B. Yeah. Um, you would probably then just do um, this. Um, yeah, because generally people will refer to reactions using like P, alpha, things like that. So if you, in this situation, you would probably just write that. But I don't think they'll ask you to do anything like this where you don't have a clear target and projectile and whatnot. Wait, and do we not have to do parity for the Um, you may have to, um, from what I had see on, seen on the test so far, there hadn't been a question made, but there had been questions that weren't yet made. So, um, for what? For spin and parity. And no, he said that's not going to be Oh, he said that, okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Okay. There's, yeah. a, there's a little bit of angular momentum on three, though, right? Mm -hmm. I thought there was. And so, Jay, I thought that was a little bit tough one. I thought that was a little bit tough one. I thought that was a little bit tough one. I thought that was a little bit tough one. I thought that was a little bit tough one. I thought that was a little bit tough one. I thought that was a little bit tough one. I thought that was a little bit tough one. I thought that was a little bit tough one. I thought that was a little bit tough one. I thought that was a little bit tough one.